to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. Without holiness, no one shall see God. Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 14. We welcome you today to our study of a life filled with holiness. Holiness is a challenge that every Christian faces. It's something that God wants us to be. But in a world of difficulty and sin, how do we live holy lives? That's the question today that we hope to answer from the Word of God. And so we're so glad that you've joined us for our study together. We're thankful that you're here to study with us. And our hope and prayer is that we can encourage each other to be holy. Friend, to start out, we want to make sure that you've got your Bible out and ready at home. And so if you would, take just a moment to, if you don't already have it, to locate your Bible, to get it out and ready to use as we're going to look to the Word of God to study about the battle for holiness. As always, our lesson is brought to you by individual Christians and congregations of the Lord's Church. The Church of Christ in your area would love for you to stop by and visit with them. Uh, locate the congregation of God's people, the Church of Christ in your home area. They'd be happy to have you for Bible study or worship on Sunday or Wednesday. You will find people there. I promise you, you will find people there who love God, who are concerned about what the Bible says, and who would be happy to help people know God and His will better. If you've got a question about salvation, you'd like to learn more about uh, worship or, or any matter related to the Bible, they'd be happy to sit down and open the truth in love and discuss that with you. Friend, we'd also love to help you here at the Gospel of Christ. Uh, you can check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com, from there, you can access all our free material, video lessons, audio lessons, written material, transcripts, study questions, just a wide variety of good Bible study material, and it's all available free of charge from our website, thegospelofchrist.com. If you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson or any of our lessons, you can access those from our free media request form. Uh, we can send those to you as a digital download. Or if you'd like to have a DVD or CD, we'd be happy, more than happy to make that available to you free of charge. And we want you to check us out on Facebook and also visit the Gospel of Christ app page for your smartphone, whether that be an Android or Apple. In a fast-paced world, it's a great way to keep up with notifications and the things we're doing here at the Gospel of Christ. My friend, it, it won't shock you to say that we live in a time of impurity and unholiness. Sin is sometimes as commonplace as breathing to many people. That fact alone, the fact that sin is rampant and that we are pressured from all sides to be involved in things that are not right, that fact alone makes it especially challenging for Christians to win the battle for holiness. In this lesson, we want to offer some good help from the Word of God to overcome the battle for holiness. You see, all the way back to Leviticus 11, verse 44, uh, quoted in 1 Peter 1, verse 15 by Peter, God says, As he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. God wants us to live a life of holiness. If we've been cleansed by the blood of Jesus, God doesn't want us to return to that former life, but to live a good, holy life every day. In fact, not only is that what God wants, that's essential. Without holiness, no one can see God. Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 14 says, and so we want to pose today 
some things that will help each of us in this battle for holiness to win the battle. How do you win the battle for holiness? Well, number one, you've got to realize you are in a spiritual battle every day. Friend, we are in a spiritual warfare against sin and against Satan every day. 2 Corinthians 10 verses 3 through 5 says, Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. For pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity unto the obedience of Christ. Yes, we live a fleshly life every day. But that's not where the battle is. The battle's inside. The battle is a spiritual battle against the host of wickedness. Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 11, Paul would say, put on the whole armor of God that we may fight the good fight of faith and win the battle against the spiritual host of wickedness. 1 Timothy 1.18, 1 Timothy 6, verse 12, Paul would say to the young evangelist Timothy, fight the good fight of faith. Friend, we've got to, sometimes we've got to shake ourselves and wake up and remember there is a war going on. That is a spiritual war against right and wrong, good and evil, holiness and unholiness. And I'm in that, whether I like it or not, I'm in that battle every day. When we realize we're in that battle, part of winning that is not only just realizing we're in the battle, but part of winning that is realizing who the enemy is. I think a lot of people out there don't realize what a dreadful foe Satan is. Like that old dragon in Revelation 12, that sly serpent in Genesis 3, that roaring lion in 1 Peter 5 verse 8, and like that one in Job 1 and 2 who brought havoc and heartache and problems into Job's life just because he could. Friend, we fight a serious enemy every day and we need God's help. With God's help, we can win that battle against him. The Bible says in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. 1 John 5 verse 4. And it is true that Jesus through death overcame him who had the power of death. And if we be faithful unto death, we can definitely win the battle. But friend, please listen carefully to me. In realizing that we're in a spiritual battle, we also need to realize just how high the stakes are. Jesus put it this way, what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul, or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? The battle, the stakes in this battle are the eternal souls of men and women. Your soul is at stake in this battle. Jesus said the righteous will go away into eternal life, the unrighteous into eternal condemnation. We need God's help to win the battle and to make sure that our soul can live with God for all eternity. But along with realizing that we're in a spiritual battle, friend, we need to understand how dire of a need there is to live a holy life. Let's put it this way. God himself is the epitome of holiness. Isaiah 6 verse 3, the cry went out from the throne of God, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. That same cry echoes from the book of Revelation. Revelation 4, verse 8, the, the, the God is holy above any other type of holiness. And so we need to realize His holiness is what motivates us to live a holy life. And friend, God expects, there is an expectation from God. I'm not perfect. God knows I'm not perfect, but He expects me to do my best to live a holy life every day. Flirting with sin, acting like it's no big deal, that, that's not what Christians ought to do. We've got to realize, 1 Peter 1 verse 15, as he who called you is holy, you be holy in all your conduct. 
without holiness, no one can see God. If we want to see God, I need to be perfect, be complete, as your Father in heaven is complete. Now again, please, please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Am I saying, are we saying today that we never make mistakes, that we never sin, that we can't ever? That, that, that's not the idea. If I'm cleansed by the blood of Jesus and I'm trying to walk in the light, there is a dire need to avoid sin, to avoid evil, and to live a good, holy life every day. Does that mean a Christian can't have fun? Of course not. Can you have fun and, and smile and be happy and live a happy life? My friend, that ought to be what it's all about. But you can't flirt with sin. You can't have one foot in the world. You can't serve God and mammon. You've got to make a separation between right and wrong and do your best to live for God every day. How else do we win the battle for holiness? Friend, we've got to recognize and overcome some challenges to holiness. Although holiness is definitely a task that is achievable, sometimes it's a struggle. It takes diligent work and it takes effort on our part to overcome sin. And so what are some of the challenges to winning that battle to holiness? Well, naturally, sin is a challenge to holiness. Listen to Hebrews 11. You know, we fool ourselves sometimes when we act like sin isn't that the, the sin doesn't have some temporary pleasure and fulfillment. We need to realize while that may be the case, it's not worth it. Hebrews eleven twenty five, Moses, he forsook the passing pleasure of sin, counting it more worthy to serve God. There is a passing pleasure to sin, but my friend, it's only temporary. It will not satisfy. It is not lasting. Genesis 3, how long you think the fruit tasted good in their mouth. Was there a, did it look good? Did it taste good? Did it, but it didn't last. It wasn't right. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2 tells us the true nature of sin separates us from God, brings spiritual death. The soul who sins will die. It separates us from God. We miss the mark of God's glory. Let's realize that sin truly is a challenge to holiness. And we need, this is what we need to do. Genesis 4, verse 7, God said to Cain, sin lies at the door. Its desire is for you. You must master it. We've got to become the master of sin, not let sin master our lives. A second challenge to holiness is the world in which we live. We're in the world, but not of the world. And we say that and believe that and teach that, but it's a challenge if we're honest. There are things that tempt us. James 4 verse 4 says worldliness and godliness can't go hand in hand with all that's in the world. Lust of flesh, lust of the eyes, the pride of life. Yeah, it does tempt us at times. What we've got to realize is the world and all that's in it is not going to last. Even if we had every passion and lust and desire, it wouldn't be worth it in the long run. Luke 12, verses 15 through 21. Man had a great crop here. He began to say to his soul, soul, you've got many goods laid up for many years. Take it easy. Eat, drink, and be merry, he said. You know what God said to that man? You fool. This night will your soul be required. Here's a man who had everything going on from a worldly perspective. He forgot to take care of his soul. Saddest verse in all the Bible. Mark 10, 17. The rich young ruler Went away, went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. He let the old world and all that's in it pull him in. And being lost to a temporary passion like that, nothing could be sadder. Another challenge is the challenge that peer pressure brings to each one of us. Exodus 23 verse 2 tells us, Do not follow a multitude to do evil. Matthew 7, 13 and 14, there are two ways, a right way, a broad way, uh, a right way that's narrow and restricted and a broad way that's got a big gate and everybody's going down it. And when everybody over here is saying, hey, you need to come down it and do it too. Friend, if we act like there isn't any pressure there, we're only fooling ourselves. But what we've got to do is we've got to ask ourselves whose opinion really counts? Does it matter 
what people of the world think of me? Or does it matter? Who am I concerned with pleasing? Am I concerned with pleasing the crowd and the online community and everybody who might put pressure on me? Or is it my desire to please God regardless of what others do or don't think about me? Another challenge. And again, it's a, a big challenge in many ways. The lust of the flesh is indeed a challenge to holiness. The Bible says in Hebrews 13, 4, marriage is honorable and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. The passions and desires, they have a good, right, and holy place. But when we allow those to run rampant in places they shouldn't, that's a challenge. A real, and a lot of people get caught up in the challenge of the lust of the flesh. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9 uh, Paul said, do you not know the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Those who give in to the immoral passions and lust of the flesh, they're not going to have that life of holiness and the satisfaction, the joy, the peace. You live in that kind of life. You know it's not right. God knows it's not right. You can't find the peace and joy that you really need in striving to live for God every day. Let me mention another one to you, and this is as much a help as it is a challenge. Sometimes choosing the wrong friends can be a real challenge to holiness. Let me read to you a verse from the book of Proverbs, I think that helps us with this. Who you allow into your circle of influence, who you allow to, to be friends in your life, that can either really help you or really hurt you in some way. You want some good advice about choosing friends who will help you to be holy? Listen to Proverbs 12, 26. The righteous should choose his friends carefully. Why? For the way of the wicked leads them astray. Evil companions corrupt good morals. Choose friends who will help you to be a godly person, who will motivate you to stay true to the Lord, and who are not going to tempt you or pressure you or encourage you to do things that are not right in the sight of God. And now as we think about what can I do to win the battle for holiness? Friend, you want to develop a, a pattern, a way of life, that promotes holiness every day. And you say, okay, well, what does that mean? What are we talking about? Well, you need to get in a habit, a good habit of doing some things that will encourage and motivate and propel you in the direction of holy living. What are those things? Number one, you need to read your Bible every day. If God is holy, and God has revealed himself to us in his word, we need to study to show ourselves approved unto God. 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. We need to search the scriptures daily. Acts 17 verse 11. We need to hide God's word in our heart that we might not sin against him. Psalm 119 verse 12. Like Jeremiah, we need to take the word of God. Your word was found and I did eat it for it was the joy and rejoicing of my heart. Jeremiah 15, verse 16. We need to let God's word consume our lives just as Jesus did in the temptation of Matthew 4. Be a person of the book. Read it, study it, live by it. Let God's word be an active part of your plan and your pattern for holiness every day. Number two, to develop a pattern for holiness. Friend, we want to encourage you every day to be a person of prayer. One of the things that impresses me about the life of Jesus, Mark chapter one, verse 35, the Bible says in the morning, a great while before daylight, Jesus departed, went out to a solitary place and there prayed. He started his day with prayer. When in times of great difficulty, Jesus prayed to the father in the garden. He spent all night on the mountain by himself praying at times. Jesus realized the value of prayer in the battle for holiness. Do we realize that? Luke 18, 1, men ought always to pray and never lose heart. Pray without ceasing. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, the effective fervent prayer of a righteous person overcomes much. And the psalmist would say, I cry unto thee daily. Now, let me give you an example of that. We say, develop a pattern for prayer. I want you to think about a person who did that and how they overcame the problems. Daniel 
was taken captive. With the captives from Jerusalem, uh, Daniel was placed in a very difficult environment. There was definitely peer pressure there. Daniel willingly chose not to defile himself with some of the things that the heathens did. And, and when they couldn't get to Daniel that way, they tried to get to Daniel through his devotion to God. And they set up this time and this statue and, and everybody who didn't bow down and pray to and worship to the statue was going to be thrown into the lion's den. Daniel knew that decree had been made. He knew what would happen. And Daniel, as was his custom from early days, three times that day, knelt and prayed before his God. Daniel didn't care. Daniel wasn't concerned about the lines. He wasn't concerned about the pressure from the people. He wasn't even concerned about the edict of the king. Daniel was concerned about praying. He was concerned about having a life of holiness. He was going to let God worry about the rest. Pray every day. Thirdly, if you're going to develop a pattern for daily holiness, this is a personal one, but you've got to recognize your own weaknesses and work on that. Every one of us is different. James 1, 22 through 25 tells us that we've got to look into the perfect law of liberty. And like a man looking in a mirror and see ourselves for who we really are and let God's word reflect on our heart. I've got to realize what the works of the flesh are that tempt me. I've got to realize that I need to grow and mature spiritually. And when I realize, hey, this is my weakness. This is my challenge. This is more difficult for me. I, I, I've fallen in this area multiple times. Now, friend, you've got to not set yourself up for failure. Don't put yourself, if a person's problem is X, whatever X may be, person's problem is fornication. Don't let yourself get in a situation where you're going to be tempted to do that, abstain from fleshly lust, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21. And then, of course, we would say, avoid questionable places and questionable situations. Ephesians 5, 11, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, rather expose them. As a final thing in our battle for holiness, friend, I want us to be, I want us to be convicted as to what it is that ought to motivate when it is challenging, when it is difficult, when holiness doesn't always come easy or I'm struggling with it, what is it that motivates me to make the right choice anyway? In a world of ungodliness, what will motivate me and you to live holy lives? Number one, I want to be like Jesus and I want to live the best life possible. Jesus said, I came that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. Philippians 2 verse 5, I want to I want to have the, the, the mind of Christ. Uh, Matthew 5 verse 16, I want to let my light so shine before men that they can see our good works and glorify our Father who is in heaven. We want to be an example to the believers. 1 Timothy 4 verse 12, I want to abstain from, from fleshly lust and follow in the footsteps of Jesus. And, and we want people to see Christ living in us the hope of glory, Acts 4.13, Colossians chapter 1. Secondly, I'm motivated to a life of holiness by the simple fact I want to go to heaven more than anything in all the world. All the sufferings of this world, they're not even worthy to compare. We would say they're not a drop in the bucket compared to the glory of heaven, Romans 8.18. When you think about what heaven's going to be like, a place of where there's no more death, no more crying, no more sorrow, no more pain. All the former things have passed away. Where God's there, where Jesus is there, where loved ones have gone to be, where we have the absence of sin and Satan and all the problems, where time doesn't exist and, and all the heartache isn't there. Don't you want to go to heaven? Friend, let that motivate you to live a faithful life to the Lord every day and, and strive to be what God wants you to be. And then, of course, be motivated by the fact that I, I want to live holy because I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to that place where the rich man wanted just one drop of water to cool his tongue. I, I don't want to go to that place where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth, where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched, where the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever, where Satan is, where evil is, where ungodliness is rampant, where there's no light and it's darkness. Live a holy life because you don't want to spend eternity in a place like that. 
But friend, above all, be convicted of a life to holiness because God's love, it encourages that. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we can be called children of God. God so loved you, he so loved me, that he gave his son so that we could have that hope. John 3, 16, the love of Christ, it compels us because we judge thus, that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all that they who live should no longer live for themselves, but live for them, him who died for them and rose again. Nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. And so it's these two verses that we want to close with that ought to remind us of the battle for holiness and how that's what God wants. Hebrews 12, 14. Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Do you want to see the Lord? Do you want to really live in his presence forever? Fight that battle for holiness every day. Because as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Friend, if you're not a child of God, if you've never had the sin cleansed in your life and obeyed the gospel, we're encouraging you today to do that. Do you believe Jesus is the Savior of the world and the Son of God? John 8, verse 24. Have you turned from a, a, a life of sin and repentance? Luke 13, verse 3. Would you confess that He is the Christ, the Son of the living God? Acts 8, verse 36 and 37. And to have every sin washed away to be a new creature in Christ. Would you be immersed in water for the forgiveness of your sins? Acts 2.38, Acts 22.16. And friend, if you haven't been living holy, our hope is this will motivate you to do that today. And may God help each of us to, as He is holy, live a holy life. We hope you'll join us next time as we study more from the gospel of Christ. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, Internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. The gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On demand, and downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the Gospel of Christ.